Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you about certain internet technologies available to you to download stuff on the internet, upload stuff to the internet, well, basically just access the internet in general. So before we continue on any further with this, I do have another video explaining how the internet works. Um, a lot of people use the internet every day. You're watching this video right now on the internet, but you probably don't know how it works. So definitely check that video out. Link is in the video description. I also have another video explaining how to understand internet download and upload speeds because a lot of people don't read the information correctly. It's a very, very, very common mistake. So a link to that is also in the video description. In fact, this whole networking stuff is all part of a single playlist. Okay. So in this video, we're going to cover the most common internet technologies available to people, which is cable internet, DSL, fiber optic, satellite, which is booming a lot. Get it? Boom. Cause the rockets boom. Never mind. And 56 K modem. Yep, because people are still using this, believe it or not, because getting internet is not that easy in certain areas. People with satellite internet will especially attest to that. Okay, so let's start with the most common one, which is cable internet. Before we continue any further, I want to mention that throughout this video, I'll be referring to internet service providers as ISP. Okay, ISP is a very common term internet service provider, those are companies that provide you your internet. So that could be Comcast in the US, we have Bell and Tech Savvy here in Canada, for example. So I'll be saying ISP instead of internet service providers, a very common term. So anyway, cable internet is the most popular here in North America, right? It's the most easily available, not for everybody, but for many people. And there's a reason for that. It's because the infrastructure already exists. Why do you ask? Excellent question. It's because Cable internet uses the exact same coaxial cable as your cable TV. Simple, right? So if you have cable TV service or if you have digital cable, well, it's coming in through a coaxial cable, right? And therefore, since the infrastructure is already there for, t for watching TV, well, of course, it's easily accessible, so it's the most popular. Now, when it comes to speeds, for cable internet and for the rest of this video, I want to mention that any brackets I show you a speed range is the most common. It might not be the only range, but it is the most common range you'll find. I've seen some companies advertise they can go beyond a gigabit, but again, this is the most common you'll find throughout North America at least. I, I'm not sure about the rest of the world. So cable speeds can be between 5 megabits per second and 500 megabits per second. Again, uh, I explained how internet speeds are understood in another video. This does not mean you can download a 500 megabyte file in one second. That's wrong. It would take you eight seconds. But again, that's for another video. Now, the thing is that it also has better latency than DSL. We're going to talk about DSL later. But your signal, the, the speed you will get your data, it will be faster and better than DSL. Okay? Latency is not the same as this. Completely different. All right? They also have bundled deals, which goes back to infrastructure exists. When I say bundle deals, well, some companies will be like, hey, you know what? At least here in Canada, it's very popular that, hey, if you buy a TV service from us for, you know, 80 channels and you buy cable internet from us, we'll give you both of them at a bundled discount of 20% off. There is a big, big caveat to cable internet, even though it's incredibly popular. I myself have cable internet and I run into the exact same issue and that's peak performance issues in your neighborhood. So here's a problem. The more people that have cable internet in your neighborhood and use it the same time as you, the slower your internet speed goes. It goes down. Yep, that sucks, right? So again, be careful of what I said. It's not a matter of how many people have in cable internet in your neighborhood. It's a matter of how many people in your neighborhood are using cable internet the same time as you. The more people are using it, the slower it gets. So for instance, on weekdays during the day, uh, mainly before the pandemic, cable internet speeds, I will always get my calf speed, let's say like, I don't know, Wednesday at 10 a.m. I will get my full 150 megabit speed uh, because no one in my neighborhood is really using it. But close to like 8 p.m., at least my neighborhood, I see dips of 20 to 30% speed decrease. So the next one to discuss is 56K dial-up internet. I know some people are going to think this is a complete waste of time, but I'm going to go over it very briefly because it helps you understand DSL internet, which I'm going to explain next. So 56K dial-up used your phone line, right? So the infrastructure was widely available, probably even more so than cable internet, because it used your phone line to get to the internet. 
it was the main source of the internet back in the 90s. I remember being a kid, and every time we went to the library, we would just grab a stash of AOL CDs because they would give you, like, each CD would give you an hour free of internet service at home. So it was a pretty bootleg time to get internet back in the day. Um, you could not use the phone and internet at the same time. So because it used your phone line, if someone happened to pick up a phone in your house, it would disconnect the internet that you're on. It was pretty scary. You would use the internet and hope nobody will call your house because if someone did and someone picked up the phone, you're disconnected from the internet. So it was a horrible time to have internet technology. Uh, the max speed was only 53 kilobytes per second. So you can imagine even back in the day when websites were really simple and condensed, it still took forever to download them. Could you imagine going to YouTube today on this? I'm sure there are people in North America, in, in Canada and US, that still use dial up because that's all they have. I kid you not. Okay, so now switching over to DSL internet. It was incredibly popular in the early 2000s. It was probably just as popular as cable internet back then, and for good reason, because it was easily available. Why? Because it uses your existing home phone line, just like 56K dial-up. The thing about this, and the reason I explained, uh, another reason for explaining 56K dial-up is because you can use your phone and internet at the same time with DSL. So if you're using DSL internet, if you're browsing the web, someone picks up your home phone line, you'll still be connected to the internet, which goes on to the next point, speed. Again, this is a bracket, this is a range. You might see some speeds that go outside of this range, but this is the most common bracket uh, speed availability from ISPs. The speed would range from five to 50 megabits per second. So it is significantly slower than the speed bracket of cable, but there's a big advantage DSL has versus cable internet. And that is of course, it will never slow down. All right, so cable internet has peak slowdown. As I mentioned, the more neighbors are online using the internet, the slower your cable internet goes. DSL never has that issue. It's always consistent. The other thing about it is that it's cheap. Uh, plans are generally cheap. You know, your monthly payment plan are generally cheap. Um, you also don't have to have a technician come to your house and set up, you know, or drill a hole in your wall. Well, it, you just use your phone line. Just plug in your modem in most cases, many cases. That's it, you don't have to have a technician come to your house and set up anything in particular. It is susceptible to storm issues though. And what I mean that is that if there's a heavy thunder and lightning storm, heavy rainfall, chances are this will go down more often than cable or fiber optics internet. It's not too common. I've had DSL internet for about four or five years. I think in that time it went down once per year maximum. And this is in you know Toronto area in Canada. So something to be aware of, but not that common. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna go over is fiber optic. As of this video recording and probably for the next several years, this is probably the most fascinating one right now, except for maybe satellite internet, but this is pretty interesting stuff. And where a lot of people wanna to try to head in this direction, including uh, ISP providers, right? So it's very unique in this technology in the sense that the wires inside, so if you ever see a fiber optic wire, you know, the covering, on the inside, it's gonna have glass or plastic, okay? So you have strands of glass and plastic in there. Now, depending on how the wire is designed, you can have a few strands of glass or plastic, or even several hundred, right? And those pieces of glass, in particular, moreover than the plastic, can even be the diameter of a hair. It's, it's pretty insane technology. It's really interesting and cool stuff. The way the data is sent over is also really interesting too is that data is sent using pulses of light, all right? Light is pulsing through those glass or plastic and that's sending and receiving data, all right? Now, the thing to keep in mind is that it's not traveling at the speed of light per se over uh, a measured distance, if you will. The reason being is because whenever you have a fiber optic cable in an office or let's say infrastructure throughout, you know, underground in your neighborhood or something, wires have to bend and curve to get around angles and spaces. So every time the light bounces around and curves, well, it slows down and the speed it travels over a certain distance. So that's why I write that. Not very really too important, but just something interesting to know. It also has low attenuation rate. What that basically means is that it can go over a longer distance before the signal fails. So for example, it'll go over a longer distance than cable internet before it needs some sort of repeater in between to keep bouncing the signal over several kilometers, for example. So it can travel further before it needs help, in a sense, 
uh, from a box, if you will. That's the most dummy way I can say it. Uh, before it loses signal and data speed. Speeds are pretty insane here. Again, this is a common bracket. Fiber optic is not too common here in North America. It's starting to build up momentum still. But the most common bracket you'll see at the consumer home level is between 500 megabits and 1.5 gigabits per second. Okay, at the enterprise level, you can get some crazy speeds, but this is just focusing on the consumer bracket uh, of speed. The other thing to keep in mind, and what's interesting here is that if you get cable or DSL internet, you could have a download speed of, let's say, 100 megabits per second down, but then your upload speed could be something pathetic like 10, right? You might notice that whenever you go to an ISP to buy, buy a plan, that is that your download speed is can be huge, your upload speed is pathetic. Fiber optic, it keeps it consistent. So if you have 500 down load speed, you can have a 500 megabits per second upload speed. So that's another advantage to fiber optic. There's no slowdown of any kind. Uh, like cable internet, the speed is always consistent no matter how many people in the neighborhood is using your fiber optic. The other thing is that it's not susceptible to rains and storms like DSL internet. Now fiber optic does have its own caveats like I've explained with all other internet technologies and as you will notice with satellite, but um, hear me out. So the first of course is cost of the infrastructure, okay? You know, phone lines and cable, coaxial cables, the infrastructure has been there for decades. So the cost of the infrastructure is the big problem here. And this leads to other issues, uh, not really issues, but things that, you know, make it tough to get fiber optic. It's because it's not common, because the infrastructure is not there. So in my neighborhood, for example, you can't get fiber optic. It doesn't exist because no one wants to invest in being into my neighborhood yet, okay? So that's why it's not that common throughout North America, at least. It's also the reason why the monthly plan is incredibly expensive. You're getting crazy fast download and upload speeds, but, you know, these ISPs have to pay for the infrastructure. They're going to take it out of your monthly plan, so it can get pretty pr pricey pretty fast. The last thing is that the cable is fragile, okay? It can be damaged rather easily. Remember, as I said earlier, inside each wire is either glass or plastic. Well, if you bend it at such a sh you know sharp, steep angle, you can break the pieces inside. The last thing we're gonna explain is satellite internet. And you want to try to avoid this at all costs, even with all the amazing advancements as of this video recording date happening in satellite internet technology. But I'll explain, you'll understand what I'm talking about shortly. There's a big issue where there's a lack of internet service in North America. Many, many, many parts of uh, America and Canada, people do not have access to the internet. And there's actually lo a lot of government intervention trying to come in and the government's trying to encourage internet service providers, please invest in infrastructure, provide people with internet. Now, a lot of people think that's not a big deal. We have to understand that almost everything nowadays relies on the internet. Even if you work in a warehouse, for you to fill out government papers and fill out insurance forms and stuff, it's all on the internet. It's not that easy if you don't have internet service to do even the most common day things. Paying bills is done on the internet. So there's a huge issue in many rural parts of uh, the US and northern parts of Canada. There's no internet. That's where people are forced to buy satellite, right? It's the only option they really have. So I drew this little terrible diagram because satellite is a rather unique technology. So the way it works is like this. You get a satellite dish, you pay the company, your ISP, a satellite dish that goes on your house. This is the house, right? It doesn't look like one, but it is. You will then broadcast a signal to a satellite in orbit, right? In Earth's orbit, literally a satellite in Earth's orbit. So the signal will go up to the satellite and then this satellite will send it back to the ISP's big dish here, right? Then from here, the ISP will send the signal to the internet and that's when you get your information. Okay, so I wanna look at Google. So then, in order for you to go to Google, in this example, you're sending a signal from your house to a satellite in orbit to your ISP's big dish that then goes over the internet. Can you imagine the data going back and forth, sending signals, receiving signals? It's incredibly slow. It's super slow. A lot of people, even today, barely able to uh, load YouTube web pages. They cannot do online gaming because the amount of times their connection will cut out is ridiculous. The speed is also horrendous. So let's go over the remaining facts about satellite internet. More often than not, yes, there's a bracket I put here, 10 to 100 megabits per second, but hear me out. More often than not, 
10 megabits per second is the most common speed you'll get. That's incredibly slow. And people pay crazy amount of money because they have no choice. This is the only way they can get internet. Bills average and range from $100 a month, $150 a month, even $200 a month. That's how poor satellite internet service is and people have no choice, they're stuck with it. Now, SpaceX is making a lot of like chatter across the internet. They're now giving you know people 100 megabits per second over satellite internet. This is incredibly groundbreaking. People are getting 100 megabits per second for $100 a month over satellite internet. It's incredible. SpaceX is just dumping satellites in orbit like crazy and is providing people with some pretty stellar speeds. Again, no pun intended. There's also been chatter that Amazon really wants to get into satellite internet services. So today, this is the most common thing, which is really unfortunate. But in a few years from this date recording, this could become very popular for satellite services, but there's still a lot of caveats, okay? So cost is a caveat I didn't write here, but I just explained it. But there's other ones. For example, you have data caps. You'll be uh, given a certain allowance of data. So maybe you can only download five gigabytes of data for your month. That's very, very common. And if you go over that data cap, you're gonna have to pay more money per gig. That's actually pretty common with cable and DSL here in Canada. The three big greedy companies, I'm not going to name who, put data caps, but they're horrendously worse on satellite internet. Upload speeds are, are really slow. So you can get 10 megabits per second download. Your upload could be like 100 kilobits per second. It's, it's just really bad, okay? Latency is another major problem. That doesn't mean it's how much data you can upload or download. It's how fast the internet travels. A signal will travel. So as I showed in my little diagram, the signal goes from your house to a satellite in orbit to your ISP and then over the internet. So it means the data travels slow. For example, if you're playing online gaming and A is to jump, you can hit A to jump and your character will jump up five or 10 seconds later on the screen. That's what gaming latency means. Voice over IP. So if you're making a phone call over Zoom, Teams or whatever, it'll be incredibly slow. So I can start talking to somebody, I'll pause, because I want to hear the other person start talking, they won't hear it for maybe a few seconds later. And you ever had that problem where you're in a phone with somebody and you start talking over each other because the signal is so slow? That's incredibly common with satellite internet. The next thing is signal block. If your satellite on your house, apartment, wherever you are, has a lot of buildings in the way blocking signal, your signal can be incredibly poor. Then lastly is storms. Anyone who has a satellite dish for TV or satellite for internet will know that storms are their worst natural enemy. Storms will just make your signal horrendous or just drop it all together. So which one should you get? Well, it really depends on your personal needs. Fiber optics is the golden standard in my opinion, but it's incredibly hard and expensive to get. So you have your choice between cable and DSL internet, but it all depends on how much speed you need, what price plans you're getting. It's a lot of X amount of variables and things to consider. So just do your research. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe and thanks for watching.